I wasn't sure if we were meant to come on then or not. Hello, Hello everybody. Hello, you beautiful, beautiful people. Oh my goodness, there are so many of you gorgeous vegan faces looking up at us. Can we have one big, massive cheer for Vegan Kampau? amazing place to be. Yeah, I mean, we were booked in to do this in 2020, but like everybody else, we had to spend an awful lot of time at home, which, well, wasn't the best, was it? But now, it's all just a memory, and here we are together, which is amazing. Here we are. It's an absolutely beautiful thing to be here. We're absolutely hyped, and we've got a story that we've been working on for the last two weeks to share with you all. As you may or may not know, we're also going to be doing an after party, which is going to be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd love to have a boogie with you then as well. But before we do that, we have to get an Instagram story of this moment. Yeah, that makes a whole bunch of sense, doesn't it, really? I mean, moments like this don't come along very often. With, like, thousands of vegans all eating wonderful food, meeting wonderful people, and just, like, going to be dancing and listening to some talks. Definitely worth an Instagram story, man. Exactly, right. So... What we want you to do, if you've seen us cooking live at festivals, you may have done this with us before, we're going to say bish, bash, and you're going to say... Oh! Oh, man, that was amazing. But with even more gusto than that, and if there is a light controller, he can pump up the lights, so she can pump up the lights when we say bosh. Okay. Cool. Here we go. Here we are. We are at Vegan Camp Out. This place looks amazing. There are thousands of smiling vegans. And we have one thing to do, and that is bish, bash, bash. Oh. Amazing. Amazing. Right, well, um, yeah, so now that the Instagram story is out of the way, I suppose we can crack on with the thing that we're here to do and talk to you about veganism. How, how do we sound, by the way? Can you put your hand up at the back if you can hear us? Give us a thumbs up, yes? Yep, cool. We don't want to be shouting, but I want to make sure you can hear us. <laughs> cool. Right, okay, let's talk. So Let's do it. Right, so let's start by way of introduction. My name is Ian Thiesby. This man here is Henry Firth, and we Ooh. go by the name Bosch, as you know. We do. And you know what? We make vegan recipes, we've been doing it for the last five years. This talk is going to be themed around the last five years and also the future. Now Jordan, he's the amazing guy that runs Vegan Camp Out. Yeah. Where is he? There he is. There's Let's Jordan. Give a shout out to Jordan once more. Yes. A wonderful sight to behold now, with all the people here, but also another thing that's wonderful about this festival is when people leave, they take everything with them. It's not just like a massive mess like it is at Leeds and Reading, so big up everybody, because you know how to behave. Yeah. And we, we're so happy to be here, we're so honoured to be with you all, we're so honoured that all of you have come to listen to us. I mean, this is probably the defining moment of our lives, so thank <laughs> you for being here, genuinely. Oh my goodness, it's all so emotional. Yeah, let's do it. Right. All right, get on with it. I know that. <laughs> so, we were going to be here last year, 2020. Unfortunately, we couldn't because of this bellend. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so here we are now. So, so what we did, where we spent the last year, was we were locked up in this cellar. It's a fairly large cellar. But, um, you know, we, we saw very little natural light in 2020. Yeah, and I suppose that a lot of you guys probably didn't see much natural light either, because most of us were just on the lock and key. But kind of, you know, we needed to. So, but it was a good moment for uh, just a period of reset and a period of, uh, like, just getting to know yourself better again once more. Absolutely. And, you know, we all know why we're here. We're here at this beautiful vegan festival packed full of like-minded people and we're doing it because of real reasons that we care about, you know, because of purpose. We're doing it because we're not happy with what's happening to animals across the planet and across the UK. Yep. We're doing it, yeah, let's have a round of applause for the animals. We're doing it because we're not happy with what we're all doing to the climate, we're seeing things burning, we're seeing things being torn down, and we know it's not right. And we know there's a link between diet and environment, and so that's why we're here. And we're also here because, you know what? A lot of the world are eating themselves to death. Woo! Woo! Sorry about that, guys. Uh, 
a lot of the world are eating themselves to death. We're not happy about that either. But we all know this. We know these facts. And you know what? It's Friday. <laughs> so we're going to try and keep this talk on a Friday vibe, OK? It's Friday night. We're going to try and have some fun. We're also ending up with a little party later on. Yes, that's going to be insane. So if, for those of you on the front row, you'll probably be able to see this set of DJ decks. But for those of you back there, I can assure you there are some DJ decks right here. And we will be playing on those from 11 o'clock until 2. And it's going to be a vibe, so come along. That's right. And also, we've already met some of you tonight. We've been signing a load of books for the last three hours. So if you do want to, there we go, we met you. Yes, we did. If you do want to come in, we've got a few books left, not loads, but we are going to be signing from midday till 3 p.m. tomorrow over at the stalls. And we've got some merch and we'll do photos and stuff. So do come and say hello if you want to tomorrow. <laughs> it is Friday. We are doing a talk and the next slide. So, boom. This is where we're at, at Bosch.tv. If you want to send us some comments, go hit us up, let us know what you thought of this talk, please do. But without further ado, let's get into it. That's it. Right, so basically, um, Jordan and his wonderful team, when they invited us to do it, they were like, we want you to do a talk. And we're like, well, what should we talk about? He's like, well, they probably want to know, like, how Bosch started, uh, like what Bosch has done, and we were like, okay, yeah, we'll do a bit of that, but we, like, we don't want to do too much of that. You don't want the full 30 minutes of us chatting about Bosch. So what we're going to do is a quick run through of what we've done over the past five years, and then we're going to get into the meat of where veganism has come to over the last five years. So that's right. So let's start. I don't know if you can tell that is a cute little Ian on the left hand side. This is a cute little Henry on the right hand side in the Sheffield Wednesday shirt, by the way. And um, you know, we've been mates since we were kids. We've been together for a long time as mates. And this was us working together in a previous company before we realized, you know, the delights of vegan food, vegan cooking. But that's how we know each other. We went to this place, High Store School. We did actually meet someone from High Store School in Where the is he? earlier. Oh, you went to High Store School as well? Yeah. Very good. There's a few of us, High Storians. High Stores, put your hands up. Very few, but one or two. Um, and yeah, we went to High Stores with this lot. These are our mates. To be honest, most of them are still not vegan, despite our best attempts, but we're working on it. They might not be vegan, but I'm pretty sure that you guys will probably have experienced the same. They might not be vegan, but they're certainly more plant-based than they were a few years ago, yeah. which is good. Yeah. They are. So, this was back in the day. Pretty much, we just set up Bosch, we started putting videos out, um, we were kind of working on the, in fact, we hadn't even put a video out, we were working on the idea as could we build a cafe for the world? And um, yeah, Veggie Prep, Prep were pretty forward thinking back then. This was 2016, five years ago. And they were like, you know what? Let's make a veggie restaurant. We went to that launch and it felt like the start of something. It really did. And uh, it inspired us to continue with the idea of making vegan food videos that will be seen by lots and lots of people in the hope that they might start cooking more vegan food. And this is a photograph. In fact, the only photograph from the first show that they ever did. They are Galaxy Donuts and they are two very sweaty men. Yes, and if you look at my face over there, you can see the kind of desperation. Okay, I'm like slightly crazed after having been cooking for three days straight in the sweltering heat. It was like the hottest weekend of the year. We were in a tiny little flat. There were five lads drinking beer, some of them smoking cigarettes, yeah. constantly cooking. You can even see the mess that we made. It was a lot of mess. It was not a pretty sight. No. But off the back of that wonderful, uh, well, kind of wonderful experience, we made 20 videos and two of those videos are here. They're not actually videos, they're kind of screenshots, but you get the idea. Yes. And so hands up if you saw either of those two. That is the watermelon Jaeger bomb and the healthy sushi cake. So it was, they, were, they were early days, weren't they? So that was the first one that we ever did, and this was the, uh, the biggest video that we did out of that shoot, at 50 million views. Mental. Wow. And um, that was absolutely honoring us. But also the really nice thing about this was, you know, it was silly food, silly cooking, slightly crazy, trying to not just be salads, you know? At the time you had tasty 
BuzzFeed's channel and other channels like that starting up and they were doing bacon and cheese wrapped in a chicken, wrapped in a bacon. And we were like, okay, let's Sorry. make some fun, crazy food but that is vegan. And you know what? They went hyper, hyper viral. And okay, yeah, so on the 28th of April 2017, we hit 1 million likes on Facebook and that is the day that we introduced ourselves to the world and that's like, because this was never about us like, you know, standing on stage and chatting to loads of people, it was all about us showing loads of people loads of tasty vegan food, but people were like, who are you? You're just a pair of hands. So we're like, here we are. Yeah. Also, loads of people have been asking us in our DMs if we would write a book. And as we approached publishers, we just kind of knew that publishers would want to see the people behind the book. So that's why we revealed our faces. And uh, these were the people who worked on the book. You'll see Lizzie, she's the one just behind my head. Lizzie Mason, she's done the photographs in every single one of our books, which hopefully a lot of you have got a book. Have any of you got a book? Raise your hand if you've got a book. Hey. We, we literally love you all. I wish I could give you all a cuddle. Uh, Onwards. And that is behind the scenes of uh, a cookbook shoot. So you, you see these wonderful photographs with perfectly placed like pieces of jam and wonderful lighting. And the reality is it's just in an office on like on some on a wooden table. Yeah. But she's incredible. She makes fantastic things happen. And we started to do some TV. So this was still um, 20, 2017, we're in? 2016? Yep, yep. 2017. 2017, we started to do some bits of TV. This was Sunday Brunch, yeah. um, where they do you know what, if I'm honest, probably shouldn't tell you this given there's thousands of you there, but Tim Lovejoy, there, he really didn't like us. Uh, and I think it's because we were vegan. Yeah, he was, he was a bit put off by the idea of two like, lads from Sheffield coming in and showing you how to cook vegan desserts. So he wasn't very kind to us. But you know what, it was okay. And also, you see that meringue right in the front of that shot there, right? So you can't see it in that shot, but on the back of it, it's completely smashed. Because one of the runners of the show dropped it just before we're about to go on TV, which doesn't help the nerves when you're about to go on national TV for the first time. Not helpful. So we made a book. This was us in the factory watching those books get printed. Oh my goodness. What a dream. Yeah, yeah, it was mad. Absolutely bonkers. It was like the sort of the culmination of a lot of hard work and we had a launch party and we launched it with these lovely people. That's our old editor, AO, Anna Jones and Doctor's Kitchen, Rupee. Uh, so that was awesome. Then we decided one book wasn't enough, so we made another one which was called yeah. Bish Bash Bosh. Uh, my dad took that photo and we wrote Lucy of Veganity yeah. on the side of a bus. Yeah. And then after Bish Bash Bosh came this, which is our little guide to veganism. It's called Bosh How to Live Vegan and we launched it with with a, a tour around the UK in an electric car. And uh, if you have any questions about veganism and you want them answering, there's your answer. And the purpose behind this book was, you know, we were always about the how. We wanted to show people how vegan food could be enjoyed. And we never really went into the why for the first two years, but our publisher just really wanted us to. And we were like, okay, fine, we'll do it. We'll, we'll put our, our why on paper. And you know what? David Attenborough had just come out with his show, Climate Change, The Facts. And I remember crying, you know, proper tears when thinking these people are finally linking diet and climate together now and we have the opportunity to be writing a book about it. This is a really important moment. We did not take it lightly and hopefully that book has done some good. Yeah. And then we did another book. Yeah, and so after the manual came uh, the, the guide to healthy vegan food and it's called Healthy, healthy Vegan. vegan. <laughs> Makes sense, right? Very, very easy. But, uh, yeah, it's like our first paper map, it did really well, there's some great recipes in there and it was a real privilege to be able to write it. What you can see is we've been quite inventive with names at the beginning, aka Bosch, but then after that we've become less inventive and we've kind of stuck with the theme. Uh, Bish Bash Bosch, yeah. Speedy Bosch and Bosch Healthy Vegan. Yeah. I mean, it's not the most inventive name is it? No, it's not. Um, but I think we got a little bit more inventive after this. We landed the UK's first vegan TV show, which is, which is a, a real honour, you know? Like to, to be in people's living rooms on a Saturday morning at 10am cooking them vegan food that they might never even consider was important for the movement. And that was such an important milestone for us. We, we sat in a coffee shop in London right at the beginning in about 2015 and we wrote down the four main things that we wanted to achieve with Bosch. We said to each other we wanted to build the biggest plant-based publishing channel in the world. We wanted to um, 
write a best-selling cookbook. We wanted to put a range of products into supermarkets and we wanted to have the first vegan TV show. That was our plan in 2015. And we wrote that stuff down. We didn't really believe that it would happen, um, but we just worked our asses off. And it's amazing, amazing that it happened. But the most important thing, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. The, the most important thing about that is obviously the purpose and the reason that we're doing this, which is to drive change. But I'm going to leave that hanging because we're going to talk more about that at the end of the talk. Yes, we are. Uh, and yeah, so everything was going really peachy. Uh, it was 2019, we just had this TV show, and then all of a sudden, boom, COVID came. And that was the sort of moment when Boris was saying that you're not allowed to go home, or you're not allowed to leave home, rather. We're like, all right, great, yeah, wow. Well, but we made the best out of a bad situation. We did. We basically turned our whole team remote. So this is our editorial team. Um, lots of editors and publicists, we all just met with them on Zoom, even our editors, Kathy and Charlie, who some of you may know, and Nat, um, everybody went remote, and we started doing live broadcasts, both cooking and also on Friday nights we played some music, live from our basement. Oh my god, that was fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, we were streaming live on Twitch every Friday night, and uh, essentially all of those live streams have just been practiced for tonight. This is what our entire life has been leading towards, I think. <laughs> yeah. um, so we've moved into this house. There's Alex. Some of you may have seen Alex on our stall earlier on, who's also our housemate, and he's put up with a lot, let's be honest. Yeah, it's so true. And uh, then, uh, like, during lockdown, we did this. Like, made some uh, Bosch I mean, cakes. If anything needs a round of applause, it's cake, right? We are like, Woo! So during lockdown, we had already been working on Boss products as a means for change and as a means for making people happy. We'd already been working on it for two years when lockdown hit. We managed to still get those cakes out. They're in supermarkets now. And also we've got a cool little cake in Costa, which is delicious. Yep. Uh, then we released another book, The Speedy, you might have seen that one. It's the pink one, uh, which is pretty tasty. Some favourite recipes in Speedy Boss. Some of you have already been talking about them with us tonight. We've got an incredible lasagna in there that you could cook in just 30 minutes. Yes, we were talking, weren't we? I remember you two. I love you two. And um, this is where we're at now. So we're so happy to be able to be back together with our friends. And this is a shot from our new book, Bosch on a Budget. Yes, it is, uh, it's going to be a good book, it comes out the 16th of December, and that basically was a whistle-stop tour as we were requested to do uh, the story of Bosch up until now. Yes. Brief interlude, before we go into talking about the last five years of vegan food, reminder. Reminder. We are going to be playing some music later on, I've already talked about it, but we're so excited. Uh, we're going to be playing some music later on, so do come back here at 11 if you want to have a little bit of a party. And if you would like to come and meet us, have a sign something, have a photo or grab a book. We'll be in our stall in the merch stand tomorrow from 12 until 3. Onwards. Onward. Right. So oh, we've got more to go. I thought, we, I thought we were moving on. Yeah. So... Is that? Oh yeah, well we were basically released that book, we did a bunch of signings, you can come and see us tomorrow. The book got actually won an award, which is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, that's a load of our friends celebrating the award, which is really cool. And then here we go! Last five years that's where I thought we were meant to be. <laughs> so, that's great. We hope you've enjoyed that boss story. It's nice to share that stuff with you. Some of you may have already he heard it. But we want to talk about what we're all doing because this is a collective movement. There are thousands of people in this room doing incredible things. The people in the food stalls back there are slogging their absolute guts out to change the world. The people in the merch stands, Peter, Viva, Vegan Camp Out, so many people doing important things. We had to talk about that. Yep. And not only that, but the big brands are getting on board now. And we talked about the sad stuff and about what's happening and the status quo and how unhappy we are about all of that. But there are some things we can celebrate in where the world is going. And that's what we want to talk about now. Now, uh, in 2016, five years ago, Starbucks, like, 
They've got 32,000 cafes in the United, uh, well, across the world, and that was the year that he introduced almond milk, which sounds small now, but back then it was bloody massive. That's right. Yeah. In just the last five years, we've gone from alternative milks being unheard of in coffee shops to alternative milks being in every single coffee shop, and now you can have your choice. And that's a big fucking moment. It is, it is. It's yeah. important. Yeah. Not only did Starbucks release uh, a plant-based option, but these guys did too. Yeah, non-dairy hit in 2016, Ben and Jerry's, and let's face it, that's a good thing. It's good stuff. Um, we've got... <laughs> so, basically, we are not the only YouTubers or uh, Instagrammers on, on the scene. There are many, many guys and girls who are killing it in the vegan space right now, and none more so than this guy. This is Avantgarde Vegan, go check him out. He launched his channel in 2016. Big round of applause for this guy. He's also got a great beard. He's a handsome chap in his guts. And the Vegan Camp Out Gang. So we are in 2016, I believe, here. The yep. first vegan yep. camp out ever happened, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, they've been rocking for a long time right here and yep. um, doing amazing things. So it, look at the change, I reckon that first one was probably a few hundred people in a field yep. and now we're talking about tens of thousands of people in a stadium. And That's it's amazing. A, it's a real marker for how, uh, how things have changed over the last five years. Right, now let's go to 2017. In the time machine, back. 2017 and Veganuary. Veganuary. Now, I think both Henry and I are completely aligned on the fact that we think that Veganuary is one of the most important things that's ever happened to the vegan movement. The guy who set it up is called Matthew Glover. He's a legend and he deserves a round of applause. And Jim Lands. So, the amazing thing that Veganuary did was they communicated to the world that it's okay to dip your toe in and try it out and try it on and see if it fits. And we meet thousands of people on a regular basis talking to us about their vegan journey and so many of them start in January. So Matthew and Jane did something fantastic. Also in that same year we had Simon Amstel putting together his really cool film, Carnage. Very funny, kind of dystopian view on the world saying how crazy it is that we eat like we do. What the hell? That was the moment we started to talk about health and also a cool pun. And look, right, so this is also the year that um, big restaurant chains on the UK high street started getting involved. This isn't just one meal on the vet on a menu, this is an entire vegan menu dropped at Wagamama and that was massive. Oh, come on. What are they talking about right here, right? So it was um, about 2017 that we met Derek Sarno, he just moved to the UK um, to work with Tesco on bringing in Wicked and a plant powered range and he, you know this guy's trying to change the world, save animals, what an absolute hero. 2018. 2018 begins like 2017 began, but this, like so last year, bear in mind it's not this year's in 2021, but 2017, 50,000 people took part in Veganuary. 2018, 118,000 take part in vegan. Mental. So inspiring. When you look at the numbers like this and you think about the change we've seen in the last five years, you realise it feels slow, it's still too slow, but it is picking up pace. These lads. Oh, we love these guys. Yeah. And Obja. Some of you may have seen this film. This hit on Netflix. Someone at Netflix is trying to change the world. And uh, they keep showing really cool things which are challenging the status quo. Opja was responsible for making people think about factory farming in a different light. Now, this is the year also that the fabled Beyond Burger reached these shores. They, they, they started doing it at Honest Burger, and uh, if you've never had one, you need to try one because it's quite remarkable. Isn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. That's unbelievable. I, I would say these things probably got us through lockdown. <laughs> that is, and, and the delivery of vegan <laughs> sweets to our door. Yeah. And obviously, Peter, we're massive fans of Peter. This was a year that we won in the, with our cookbook Bosch and I think Bishmash Bosch, yeah. who won the Peter's Best Book Award. We're so grateful to that. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. Thank you for everything you do. Yeah. Yeah. Peter, Peter uh, we've been at the merch stand all day, and they've got a merch stand over there. So if you want to go and show them love, do that tomorrow, because and they deserve it. 
absolutely. And Viva as well, another charity doing amazing things, also working really closely on this event. So do go say hello, work with those guys, support them if you can. And these guys, come on. Right, so basically, December 2018, you had loads of vegan cookbooks came out. So Vegan, Matt Pritchard, Kim Judy Hansen, Leon, and Brett Cobley all released cookbooks that were vegan. And that is massive. One yes. month, five. Yes. It was, it was like all of a sudden everybody yep. was releasing a book, which is fantastic, you know. But a lot of people would get dragged up on competition and thinking this is our space or my space, or, but it's not like that at all. What we're doing is we're challenging the status quo, we're creating a new category together. And everybody that is working in this category together is growing the category together. So we should all be thinking of everyone we're working with, everyone together. We're collaborators, not competition. Exactly. It was bloody good. Now, this is the very beginning of 2019, and look at that number in the bottom right hand corner. It's going up. It's going up again. A quarter of a million people this year. That's mad. 200,000 people more than two years ago. Whoa. Also, how many people actually fill in an online form? Exactly. So if you think about it, this number is way, way, way higher than that, which is a wonderful thing to see. Now, uh, that year, Lewis Hamilton opened Luke Burger. Delicious. Exactly. I think these guys are here, actually. Yeah. Ian's got a funny story about Lewis Hamilton right now. Yeah, so I, went, I was up in Scotland for the last few days, and uh, there was a couple of uh, my girlfriend's um, friends' kids there, right? And, uh, and uh, I asked them, because I was wondering, I wonder what goes through the mind of a 12-year-old. I was like, in your opinion, who is the coolest guy? I was expecting to say, I don't know, he's expecting to say because he's 12. But he was like, Lewis Hamilton. I was like, that's really cool. So, big up Lewis Hamilton. So, 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 the coolest person in the world, according to that 12 year old, is not only vegan, but he's a vegan activist. That's a really great thing for us. Yes. Um, we, saw, we saw supermarkets. Yeah. We've seen more and more supermarkets getting on board, which we're hyped. We've got this guy. He's a good looking chap, isn't he? Yeah. Max Lamana. We've had the pleasure of hanging out with Max recently. He's released a wicked cookbook as well, and he started us all talking about food waste, lowering waste, which is a great thing for us to be thinking about as well. And of course, yep. once more, let's look at these burgers. Yeah. But the thing we want to talk about this, with these burgers is we're starting to see money flowing into vegan food now. Over the last two years, it started to become really, really big business. Yeah, they raised quarter billion pounds, it's insane. And, and, and whenever you talk to somebody now who is working in this space and has some kind of a view on capitalism, on investment, they are all talking about plant-based being the hottest new thing. And that is down to all of you guys. Woo! Yep, absolutely. Now, also this year, like some pretty serious stuff happened. And um, yeah, Extinction Rebellion sort of decided that it was a high time that we took to the streets and actually did something about the ridiculous climate change that we're all facing, staring right into the face of. And uh, this is a really powerful image from one of the protests that we went to. And um, it was a real pleasure, a real honour, real uh, moving, like, being there. But it also, like, puts real fire in your belly. Absolutely. And we, we wanted to be involved, so obviously we went down. We made cookies, we took down a, an entire shop, we did a massive shop for the Animal Rebellion team, and we then hosted a shout out to Animal Rebellion, yep. by the way. They're here. We love Animal Rebellion. We also hosted, I couldn't quite work out if it was Animal Rebellion or the Bristol branch of Extinction Rebellion, but essentially we gave them our kitchen yep. to use as their kitchen because all the kitchens they were trying to put up kept getting taken down so like you know what you can just use our kitchen so we we had a, about five people just cooking constantly for the entire weekend for our kitchen which was mad yeah, it was cooking in the biggest pot ever it was like a like a witch's cauldron just stirring this massive pot of curry it was amazing yeah i mean you know when you're like adding spice to a curry which probably we've all done his version, that chef, his version of spice and curry was getting a giant shopping bag full of spices and just putting the whole thing in. Yeah, it was bonkers. It worked though. Yeah, it did. Tasty. Tasty. Fed a lot of people. 
Um, uh, this year also, the grocer, now if you guys don't know about this, they, um, it's like the bible for, for, um, for, for food, just any food. And they, they basically this year they started doing the plant-based power list and like, they included a whole bunch of people uh, who have been pushing the vegan food, like the guy at Mark's Spencer's, like Derek Sarno, um, like Matthew Glover, and they whacked us in there, which is really awesome. And then we saw Little London Vegan. Now, obviously, she's really cool. She gets these amazing photos of her with the food. Um, but also, she got a new job with Papa John's as their chief vegan officer. Yeah. Which I thought was quite cool to see, yeah. you know, the world is changing in this way. Now, big brands are trying to get on board and hire a chief vegan officer. Great. It's crazy. Um, look, look! meat company. This is just a meat company. That's what they do, but they're like, uh, no, our business is just dying, so we're going to need to sort, sort that out, and we're going to need to do proper sausages that don't contain horrible pig. And they're pretty tasty. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, and you know what? It's so easy to focus on all the times that big meat companies spend money to try and put down veganism, but it is also great for us to remember that big meat companies are getting on board with plant-based protein, and that is really important. That is how change happens, and we're so excited about that. <laughs> you can tell we're literally, we're food. We're literally just plugging other people's products, right? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Apple were going to be chuffed. They are. But let's face it, when these guys drop their cheese, we could again experience cheese pulls. Actual cheese pulls. Stringy cheese that melts properly. It's good. Yeah. And Rachel Amma. <laughs> She's such a superhero. If you don't follow her already, go check her out on YouTube. She released a book, Vegan Eats. It was wonderful. She also came and worked with us on um, some videos and on TV. So she released a book. Definitely go check out Vegan Eats. So that brings us forward to 2020. 400,000 people in Veganuary. Lots and lots of people signing up for Veganuary doing vegan food, which is good. Now, we also had a sombre moment, which we, we talked about before. London became a ghost town. ghost town. Essentially, we got almost to the doorway of Zombieland. Yeah. You know, we were walking down the street, no one on the street, and there's signposts everywhere saying, go home, protect yourself. That is the beginning of a zombie movie. Yeah. It really is. And also, but like, a lot of people, like, actually blossomed. In, in lockdown, and a lot of people made the best of a, of a bad situation, and I think there's some boys in here who made the best of a bad situation, actually. They're not these guys. Asda in 2020 released their own stuff. Yeah, what we've seen now, despite 2020 being so weird, is that supermarkets really thrived and really started to aggressively expand their vegan ranges. Asda did well, we had Sainsbury's do well, we had Co-op, Co-op. Co -op. they all did well. And, what the pitta, oh, yeah. and Tesco, yeah. and what the pitta won a national kebab award for a vegan kebab. Again, vegan things, breaking yeah. all the records, love that. And now, these are the guys I was talking who, about. Who knows the plant boys? Okay, yeah. if you don't know the plant boys, you need to go follow them on Instagram or TikTok, I guess. Yeah. We spell plant boys. B O I S I I S I I S. Yeah. And the, yeah, the reason why they're up here is because, as I was saying before, there's a lot of people who made uh, the best out of a bad situation in lockdown. And these guys set up their channel like loads of other creators did. So, big round of applause for those guys and everyone else. Go check them out. Now, what we've also seen during lockdown is Deliveroo had a massive surge in vegan sales. Their sales went up by 163% of vegan meals and vegan food during 2020. So people are buying vegan food when they're thinking about their health and they're thinking about what might have caused the pandemic, right? They're starting to think, oh, maybe this vegan thing is something we should get on board with. Yep. 2021 is the area we're in now and it started with 582,000 people taking part in Veganery and that's a share of all the people. Yes. And, you know, like these guys or not, the fact that they are making 
vegan chicken burgers is a really important moment in time because it's the start of us helping chickens out. That's what this is about. And moving forward, 2021, this is a sneak preview. Um, Gordon Ramsay, the guy started to get on board with vegan food, right? Historically, he was always rude about vegan food, always. But he's started to change his tune, hasn't he? Yeah, this year he has released two viral vegan recipes and he's actively talking about it in a more positive way. And although, yes, he has been very negative about us in the past, he's getting toward the promised land slowly. And I think that's worth a note. Uh, we may or may not have uh, a moment on TV coming up with him at some point. Watch this space. Watch out. The guy was right. a really cool guy to meet, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. And only, like, so this year, only raised 1.4 billion dollars to carry on, like, d desecrating the dairy industry, and that is a good thing. Fantastic. And of course, <laughs> see what else will happen. Wow. I can't tell you how many people came up to us after Sea Spiracy. This is friends, the friends we showed you right at the beginning, who had never been vegan or veggie, and maybe they talked about beef somewhat, but came up and were like, you know what? I watched Seaspiracy, I'm cutting down on fish. I'm gonna stop eating fish. That film was amazing, and it's done so much good. It really has. So that, basically, is the wrap-up of the last five years. Obviously, there's thousands more things that we could have picked up, but we didn't have enough time. So, yeah, I mean, the last five years has been amazing. Can you imagine what the next five years is gonna be like? So. Well, I felt emotional after I know, it's, 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 it's beautiful and it's nice to see some positive news. Now we want to talk quickly about what we've got planned for the next five years for Bosch and what we're planning on and how we've been thinking. But we're going to be quick and rattle through this because it's Friday and you're probably all ready for a drink. So, the next five years of Bosch. We have a new book coming, Bosch on a Budget. Yeah. There's some goodies in there, and that is the first time anyone's seen the cover, so you guys are lucky about that. And that is basically a cover reveal. Maybe we should get a photo of us in front of the tree. Uh, yeah. We've got some photographers here helping out, and this is definitely a moment. Nice. Very good. <laughs> Amazing. So, we're really excited. That is potentially one of the best books we've done. We've got a shakshuka here with vegan egg, and Look this is a chicken burger to die for. And it's all affordable, it's all post-Covid friendly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, we've got hopefully some more TV stuff coming, so watch out for that. Woo! Yeah. This is a work in progress. So, you know, we put out Living on the Veg, then Covid happened, and everything has been a bit weird since then. Yeah. We're working on something new, we can't say anything more about it, but it's an important thing for us and we're very excited. Products. Got some more products coming out, like we've got now products, vegan products in every single supermarket in the UK, which is great, but we've got some really exciting products coming. So, we want to talk to you about the products, but we also want to talk to you about why. So, it's 2021 now, so many brands are doing the greenwashing thing, and are saying, you know, they're about the climate and they're about the planet, and if we boil it down, what they're doing is they're talking about purpose, but they're not making a contribution. So the key thing here that we want to focus on for 2021 and forwards is it's about contribution. It's not enough to say that you're about something. What are you doing about that something and what contribution are you making? We're asking ourselves that question. We're, we're still really, really scrutinizing ourselves and thinking, are we doing enough? What can we do more? How can we measure what we're doing? So that's what this is about. In five years of Bosch, we've had two billion views which, you know, we're going to equate that to about two million meals cooked. It's, you know, you've got to come up with a number somehow. 10,000 views, 10 people cooking it, feels like it might be about right. We've sold nearly a million books. Thank you. And that is a million people looking at vegan recipes. And we equate, if everybody cooks, let's say, three meals from a cookbook. Some people that we've met tonight have cooked every single recipe in a book. So three doesn't sound crazy. That is three million meals cooked. One meal for two people. As we've all seen on the Cowspiracy calculator, the vegan web designer put up a wicked calculator. One meal for two people saves six kilograms of carbon dioxide and saves 0.66 animals' lives. So, 
is another assumption that we're making here, which is 92% of plant-based meals eaten by are eaten by non-vegans or vegetarians. We've seen that across the board. So basically, nine out of ten people buying vegan food are actually not vegan. That gives us the ability to work out what difference our food is making. So, 4.84 million meals, 26,720 tons of CO2, and 2.9 million animals saved. Thank you, thank you. It makes us really proud and humble. We can we can pull this apart if we want to, you know, it's, it's hard to extrapolate a number like this, but it's important for us that we're measuring the impact that we're having. That's also equivalent to 6,000 cars taken off the road and 26,000 return flights from Paris to New York. So, cakes. <laughs> Let's talk about cakes. One and a half million cakes equals three million eggs. And we've sold one and a half million cakes. So, that's three million eggs that didn't get used for those people to eat those cakes. 630 tonnes of carbon dioxide, 10,000 hens would lay that many cakes. And that is a whole chicken farm. So, so, it's emotional to start thinking about the difference we can be having. And if you're running a vegan business, or even if you're just cooking vegan food for your family, I wholeheartedly encourage you to pull your numbers together and have a look at what impact you're making through the rule of supply and demand because you are making a difference. Yeah. And let's get it right, for every person who's not vegan and then you cook them a meal or you show them a video or you buy them a recipe book, you'll be having an impact too. Yeah. So it's just like those little things go an awfully long way for making massive change. So the moral of that story is get your non-vegan rates around and cook them a meal. Absolutely, that's how information spreads, that's how the word spreads. Bring people on the journey with you. We've never been about just cooking food for vegans. It's amazing that vegans enjoy our food, but we really want to spread it to flexitarians, pescatarians, to everybody, so that everybody can be involved. That's how we make change. So, some exclusive news. Yes. So, we said that we've got some exciting products launching, and these are vegan ready meals, right? And these are based from the recipes in our books, and trust me, they are incredibly tasty. So the craziness of having, let's say, the Bosch chili, which we've cooked hundreds of times, and having that presented to you in a format that you can cook it and enjoy it within 60 seconds, and it tastes just like the real thing. It's not packed with nasties, it's recyclable packaging. These things are amazing. But it's not just about putting products on shelves, it is about impact. So, in 2020, an estimated 5 million people in the UK use ready meals more than once a week. This is where we are. This is the state of food right now in the UK. That is 2.7 billion ready meals every year in the UK. Now, if even 10% of them go vegan, we will save another 800,000 tonnes and 90 million animals every single year. changing it up and twisting the dial and getting more plants on more plates. Absolutely. So, thank you so much for being so amazing. Oh my goodness, it's been, I'm, I'm like almost bursting with emotion from, <laughs> from talking to all of you. It's, yeah. been, it's been amazing. Um, we're going to start to wrap this up now. Um, you've been very attentive and you definitely need to go and grab some refreshments or some of that tasty vegan food. But we just wanted to finish and say, you know, we are all here because we know that plant-based food, vegan food, is better for the world, it's better for animals, and it's great for our body too. It really is, and, you know, it's like, what's happening, like, out there, at, at the moment, all across the world, is just, it needs to change. Like, we, 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 we all have a responsibility, not to, like, our fellow human brothers and sisters, but the ones that are voiceless. We need to sort things out for these guys so they don't have to live fucking there. Absolutely. And um, we, you know, we see it every year. We hear the news about the forest fires. We see the floods. We see the crazy weather events. We feel this new term, which is climate unease, climate discomfort. We feel scared about what kind of world we're creating for our children and for the future. We feel kind of responsible and like we want to change things, but we don't know how. The most important thing to realize is 
we can all make a difference. We can, even, even if it's small, we all, we all know this deep in our hearts, but sometimes we forget just talking to people, just cooking food to people, just carrying on standing strong to your truth is so important. And you know why? We're all like-minded. We all have the same mentality and understand the same things. The planet and the animals and the humans need you because we have got 12 years to save the world from climate catastrophe. That was the BBC. We've got humanity has wiped out 60% of animal populations since 1970, and that's from The Guardian, and that's terrible. And yet, the United Nations have confirmed what we all know, which is the vegan diet can save the world from hunger, it can fuel poverty, and the worst impacts of climate change. That's why we all need to make a difference. So it's really important what all of you are doing with your lives, the choices that you're making and the things that you're doing. We can all change the world step by step, and we should. And we absolutely need to, as we've said before. Um, like, yeah, like I reckon, actually, I'm gonna give you guys a big round of applause because you're all legends. <laughs> and you should give yourself a big round of applause because you're changing the world. Now we have to finish, sadly. We have one message before we go, the same message we gave you before, which is we'd love to see you back in here for a party in about an hour. Um, we're gonna be kinda bouncing around, playing some fun party tunes. It's gonna be kind of familiar things that you will know for the first hour. We're gonna move into a kind of latin -y house music, and then we've got some drum and bass and jungle at the end for the real party. So we'd love to spend that time with you, and we would also love to see you tomorrow between 12 midday and 3 p.m. at the bus stall over in the merch stand where we will sign anything you got, any books, any flyers, take pictures, and we've also got merch and stuff to sell as well. So we'd love to see you there. And I feel, I feel that we should just end this as we started with a simple bish, bash, bash.